So the energy metaverse. In the last couple of weeks, the term metaverse has kind of popped up into the general public. Now, over the next 10, 12 minutes, I want to kind of talk you through where I see what the metaverse is about, the characteristics of a metaverse, and the tools and the technologies that are under the covers today, and why I am convinced we're already building the energy metaverse. Because if you walk around the halls here and you see the different technologies, we're on the path already. So, the metaverse. So the general consensus is that the metaverse, the first time that word was used, was by an author. Neil Stevenson wrote the book Snow Crash in 1992. It's a bit dystopian. How many of you have seen Ready Player One, the movie? Similar, Snow Crash is very similar. Ready Player One was written in 2012, big movie in 2018, right? I'm a big fan. As Sasha said, I'm a technology evangelist. I, I've spent my career mostly in enterprise IT sales with Compaq, HP, with Intel for 10 years, heading up their sales into the energy sector. And I spend my time now consultant, helping companies understand the implications of new technologies. And I just see the metaverse being the perfect storm of a lot of these technologies coming at us. Now, those of us that have been playing with VR, AR, augmented reality, virtual reality, mixed reality, virtual worlds for the last 10 years, we're talking about the metaverse for a while. And then a couple of weeks ago, Facebook changed their name and everybody heard the word metaverse. So suddenly it was like, ooh, this is a new cool thing. Now, if you are a startup and you are looking for seeding feed um, money, put metaverse in your name, right? You are guaranteed billions, trust me. It's hot money in Wall Street and Silicon Valley anywhere right now. But to cut a long story short, a lot of people have been working on what we call virtual worlds, different virtual reality, augmented reality experiences. And many of you going to any conference, energy conference, you'll have seen people showing VR demos, augmented reality demos. You have people Siemens, ABB, Schneider Electric building digital twins, where you have a 3D representation. There's people doing VR training. There's a lot of people building out platforms. How many of you have heard of NVIDIA's Omniverse? Right? That is a software platform where you can take your 3D models and put them into a virtual world. They've been doing that for two years. Siemens and others integrate some of their product lifecycle management models into the Omniverse. So all this stuff's been going on in the background. Now, so the Metaverse does not have a real definition. You talk to 50 people, you'll probably get 51 definitions. But it's this something about we'll have this new way of experiencing. Some people talk about it, the new internet. And in my opinion, there's five characteristics that the Metaverse will turn into. You're in some sort of a world, some sort of an environment. Now, some people will say it has to be a virtual reality world. That's the only one that counts. Well, maybe it's a mixed reality. Maybe it's in the real world. I have augmented reality glasses here, and I can pick out each of your names. So that's an augmented experience. That's potentially a piece of the metal metaverse in the future. We're not sure, but it's, you have some sort of a world. The other thing is that you in that world has have a presence. And typically that presence is with an avatar. Now in many things you can play or use today, an avatar is kind of a cartoony character. But there's more companies out there that are taking, you can get a body scan of yourself and your avatar is you, looks like you. And then with the right software, the right hardware, as I'm walking around the stage here, my mannerisms, I'm in a virtual world, and it's me. Now, 18 months ago, I was using an app called Spaces when we all started getting in lockdown. And I was doing virtual presentations, and I was using a, I had a big kick-ass PC and an uh, Oculus Rift headset and Spaces software. And as I was doing this with my hands, my avatar was doing this on Zoom calls. So the technology exists. What happened, Spaces? They got bought by Apple. I wonder why, <laughs> okay? 
Anyway, so all of this stuff is going on. So you have a presence. It's like, it's, it's me. And the other thing is, is that you have one avatar. If you move from one world to another, it's still you. Now, maybe you change. I turn into a green leprechaun in some avatars or whatever. That's up to yourself. But you have, pr you have presence. The other thing is persistent. When you leave a virtual world, it's not just your world. Because maybe I was meeting with Frederick to plan the next charge conference in our virtual world. I left, but he stayed there, and then he had a meeting with someone else. Maybe it's a, a virtual world of Milan. Other people are coming and going. So the virtual world is persistent. And when I come back, I might need to catch up on what happened in the virtual world because I wasn't there. The other piece that we, we probably need to watch for is that there's an economy in there. And what I mean by an economy is you can make things, you can buy things, you can sell things. There was a VR world that came out in 2003, Second Life. I bought an island in Second Life in 2004. Still there. Well, it was last week, unless someone stole it. So these kind of technologies and the economies and whatever are continuing. Anyone here play Fortnite? I play a lot of Fortnite, right? I'm a big kid, as my wife says. I have bought costumes. I have bought guns and things in Fortnite. I buy in different games. I sell them. I trade them. There's an entire economy. And what some people are looking at as we get into the bigger metaverse is they say, ah, do you know what? Our entire economy will run on tokens. Crypto tokens. We'll suddenly have token economics. It's real money in that virtual world. I can earn it. I can make it. I can, I can spend it. And the last thing that I would say will that the reason we have this, we have virtual worlds, I have a presence, I have um, persistence, so I'm, I'm the same person, I come and go, there's an economy, it gives me an experience. And that experience today is primarily, in the examples I give in a second, is about entertainment, but it might give me an experience in terms of as I'm commissioning the next gas turbine in a power plant somewhere, because of lockdown I can't go there, so I will be there in a virtual world with my avatar, working with my people to commission that power plant. And you'd say that's never happening. It has happened in the past 18 months because COVID drove us to adopt technologies in different ways. Now, examples of where all this is going on. As I said, a lot of the stuff is in the entertainment world. Epic built Fortnite. They're off making billions every day. I watched an Ari Ariana Grande concert in Fortnite. It was an experience. Me and 27 million other people over five different shows. Just think about that. The scalability of that platform. You have things now, Microsoft have Mesh. Facebook have work uh, rooms. You have the uh, NVIDIA Omniverse. There's more and more companies building these platforms you can then go off and get your headset, or you can still use the standard PC, and you can start uh, having virtual experiences. Do you know that in the next couple of weeks and months, you can have a, a, a Facebook work rooms meeting on Zoom or on MS Teams? So you can be sitting there in your MS Teams, your colleague is wearing a VR headset in their home office, and you're interacting with them with a, with a, with a, with a cartoon character. That's, that's there today. I've been beta testing it for the last couple of months. So this is all coming at us. So we have software platforms, we have headsets, we have new wearables. There's a thing called a Tesla suit. You put it on, it's full body haptic feedback. It's used in the nuclear industry today to train people where that if they move closer here, it starts to get hot because there's a fire behind them. You have haptic gloves. And if you're a familiar fan of Ready Player One, you know there was a guy you can you move it around and you have the, the, the treadmill, but it's a bi-directional treadmill, any direction. They exist. Go on YouTube, look for them. There's five companies building them. And we have CES in a couple of weeks, so God knows what new cool gadget kids will come out. And you're saying, this is wonderful, Kev. What, has this got, what the hell has this got to do with the energy industry? The technology that we use for headsets, wearables, suits, the conveyor belts, all this stuff, that's not for the energy. That's just general 
coming to us as devices, as tools. The platforms that will be built to create these virtual worlds, the Unreal Engine for gaming, the, the Havoc Engine, you have the Omniverse from um, NVIDIA, Microsoft Mesh, Facebook are building a platform. So the way we think of AWS and Google as hosting platforms, those platforms exist. And here's where I think we're already doing this in the energy industry. Because where do the virtual worlds come from that we'll be wandering around inside? It's all the digital twin data we're already collecting. You walk around in that hall, I dare you to find someone who doesn't mention digital twin on every single stand. We started off with CAD CAM designs. We're now taking virtual, or sorry, we're taking that design and we're feeding it in with real time data from IoT sensors. And I can see what's going on. I can simulate what happens if, the, if this happens in the power plant. You had Robert earlier up from um, uh, Inel and, and Grid Expertise. Two years ago, I was chatting with Robert in Milan at their, their um, Oh, innovation center. They're building a network digital twin of their entire grid. You've got drones walking or flying around. You've got people are using all sorts of the um, Boston Dynamics Animal, uh, sorry, not Animal, um, Spot. You've got uh, bi uh, antibiotics from Switzerland with Animal. You've got drones, low Earth orbit satellites. You've got LIDAR scans. You've got body cameras. People are building digital twins in the real world today and it's only a matter of time they put them into a 3D virtual world where you can walk in with your avatar. And if you think I'm away with the fairies, as we say where I come from, well, I was over at a, an oil and gas conference in the Gulf two weeks ago, and there was a company there, uh, Eve, uh, Arriva, and they had a digital, tw they had a VR training simulation of a refinery and they were feeding real-time simulated data from the refinery into the simulation so that if I went in and I started turning and pulling different things in the wrong order, bad things happen. It reacted as if it was, I was in a real plant. It wasn't just a, a static scenario. And that's just the scratch in the surface. So, cut a long story short. Do we think that we're all going to you know, go home, get a VR headset, and we'll all be in the metaverse and after Christmas? We won't. But if you think that this technology and the implications with COVID travel restrictions, I can't get the people, we need to meet remotely. And as, as good as Zoom and Teams and Skype have been, we need better experiences. So maybe you think I'm off smoking something weird, but to be quite honest, the metaverse is coming. It's already here in different places. So, hey, I think the energy metaverse, we're already building it. I'm done. <laughs>